I was working on a Husqvarna tank earlier this week. And this is the tank right here. Now, we put together a video and it's gonna show you a little bit more about how we got this dent up to, to the point that it's at and we were using heat on it and a special pry bar that we've had made. But I'm gonna share this information with you right now and it's gonna give you an idea of how you can maybe tackle something like an aluminum tank. And it doesn't have to be a Husqvarna tank. It can be any aluminum tank. You're gonna start by drilling a little hole in the bottom. Well, I don't wanna to get too far ahead of myself. Jordan's got the picture up there right now. So as I was saying, you're gonna drill a little hole in the bottom of that tank. You're gonna drill a hole in the middle of where the dent is. Wherever that dent is, go toward the middle. This way you have access with whatever tool you're gonna to be using to get in there to pry that area up. Also, before, and, and Jordan, no, you're good there. Go back there, Jordan, for a second. Let's stay with that. Because something I didn't take a picture of and I wanted to make clear. You're gonna to have to go in with that drill at a little bit of an angle, depending on where your dent is. To do that, you're gonna to have to use one of the tiniest drills that you have, maybe a 16th of an inch, something very small. In order to do that, you should use a spring-loaded center punch to make a nice dent in there so you can get your drill started and you can keep it as straight as possible so it doesn't walk all around because you're gonna be on a little bit of an angle. Now, after you do that and you drill your little pilot hole, you're gonna go and figure out what tool you're gonna to use to approach that dent. You're gonna use a step-up bit like this to drill it a little bit further. I use a tool like this. Now, I don't know if you could see it on the air. Uh, yeah, you could see it on the screen. This is something that I had made from Daryl Dickerson, uh, my welder. It's a piece of 3 8 steel tubing. It's hollow. It's got a little pitch here at the end, and it's got a round knob here at the top. That's where I go in there in those holes on those tanks, and I pry away at the dent that I'm trying to lift. Now, I think at this point, we can go to the video, and I'll explain a little bit more to you as we're taking a look at it. I've also mounted up my tank in a vise with a bolt that goes across the front in the mounts. I use a magnet to find out where the tool is inside the tank. Now, using a regular bottle of map gas that you can buy at any hardware store or home improvement center, I begin to heat up the whole area of the dent. I don't get too close. I move that little torch about as, about as much as I can. It's gonna get pretty hot. And as I do that, after a couple of minutes, I get that tool in there and I begin to pry away at that tank. I do use the magnet throughout this at times. Be careful if you do it after the tank is hot, the magnet can get hot as well. As you look at it in the video, you can see where at the bottom of the tank, where the dent starts to raise. And I move that flame around, work that whole area, keep it nice and warm. And I keep prying away with that with that uh, pry bar. I had a little problem there where the, the old pinstripe was catching on fire, so I scraped it away with a file. Now, I go back in there while it's still warm and I keep prying and I begin to raise the dent. The thing you wanna keep in mind is you wanna raise that dent as much as you can from the bottom toward the top all the way across. You don't wanna just start off in the middle of the tank, otherwise you have a bunch of little dents all around the middle of the dent. If you wind up with a high spot, you can take your body hammer like that tap it down a little bit and get it back into shape. I use a bottle of water, uh, a spray bottle with some ice in it, keep the water nice and cold. I spray it on there to keep everything cool down. Then I go back and follow up with my sanding block. As you can see right here, we've got uh, a good section of that dent up. I go back after I sand it where I can see my high spots. I'll follow up again with the torch, get it warm and begin to lift it up again with that pry tool, whatever you may use uh, inside there. So you can see how big the dent was when we got started in the picture on the right, you can see where it is on the left. A lot of people will tell you, well, heat doesn't you know, respond to, uh, aluminum doesn't respond to heat and it doesn't. It dissipates heat very, very quickly. You may not have a torch, you may not be skilled in that area. I'm not a metallurgist, I'm not a welder. I know though, that map gas in a situation like that with an aluminum husky tank along with a tool like this, that you can raise up that dent. Now, what you've seen there is only a fraction of the amount of time and work that's gonna wind up going into that area. That little video there in Jordan did a time lapse, took me well over an hour and a half, well over an hour and a half, and that dent isn't even 25% back into shape. 
I just began to lift the majority of it. Well, not the majority of it. I began to lift about 25% of it back into shape. There's a lot more prying. There's a lot more heat. And there'll be some sanding, a lot of sanding to do as well by the time we get to the end of that job. But if you're bold enough and you want to give it a try, a bottle of map gas, and you could use most anything. It doesn't have to be a special tool like I've had made here. There's instances where I have used bolts to get in there. I have, you know what? I happen to have it right here in front of me. This rod is, it's rectangular. It's square, actually. This was part of a rotisserie to a grill. It's got a pointy end on it where you poke it through a rib roast or whatever it is you were cooking. I bent it up on the end, and sometimes I get in there with that as well on a dent with a crease because it's got a real nice point on it. So if I have a dent with a crease, I'll heat up that area and I'll get in there with this. There really is no science to it as far as what type of tool you're going to use. Yes, you'll hear from people who do paintless dent removal that there are certain tools that they do it with. That's on a door skin or a skin of a fender of a car that is nowhere near the thickness of a gas tank. So with that in mind, with a bottle of map gas and some tools that you could probably make at home, you can make an attempt on getting some of the dents out of those aluminum tanks. Jordan, thanks for editing that video. You did a great job on that. If anybody has any questions, you could always send me a message and I'll give you a little bit more information on how to approach some dents in aluminum gas tanks.